This, this is Smorgasbord. Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I am Mick, and here is my co-host, Angel. And today we are... I, I, I'm going to learn to say my name normally <laughs> at one point. That's What's the fun in that? Maybe I'll change <laughs> okay. the way I say my name. I yeah, me. <laughs> Save it for Halloween. Save it for the Halloween Damn, episode. Okay. <laughs> I'm Mick. <laughs> and then I have to go opposite. My... I'm <laughs> Angel. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Let's do this, bitches. Oh my god. Let's talk about food. <laughs> yeah, and today we are covering, I guess what I would call Smorgasbord's favorite meat. <laughs> It should be everybody's favorite meat. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's, it's my favorite meat. Spam. Sure. Spam. Spam, bam. Remember spam? Oh. <laughs> I don't. I never forget spam. We should do a flashback um, highlight episode of the, the spam highlight reel. cooking episode. <laughs> Where we just boiled spam. 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 Hey, I made, a, I made a stew. Yeah. I don't even know what I called it. It was, it was brown. <laughs> and I tried. Anyway. Uh, oh yeah, and I tried to make spam soup. Spam soup. Yeah. With cheese. Cheese and spices. Yeah, you know my mom <sighs> watched that, and she's like, "This guy doesn't know how to cook." <laughs> well, first of all, I was not cooking in a kitchen, so. <laughs> You tried. An attempt was made. Hey, whatever. It it was good. And it was good. I That's enjoyed all that it. matters. <laughs> yeah, this ever popular can of lunch and meat has evolved and changed in popularity both in America and globally since its birth in the late twenties. Uh, so today we're gonna cover its history, rise and fall, and rise in fame, and the ways the world eats this beautiful, beautiful form of meat. Hunk of hunk of pink. Hunk of like cube. <laughs> Uh, I figured instead of doing what are we eating today, we'd ask, when's the last time you ate Spam? I, the last time we ate Spam was when we had um, dinner at Bianco's. Okay. I put Spam, pan fried Spam mm -hmm. into that salad that I made. Oh, okay. I don't think so, I was in that dinner. You were not there. So. Were you there? No, I think. No, I felt like I you was had still to on work a show. or something. I was still in Hope, yeah. I think. Oh, you missed out. I oh, made man. a lot. I went all out on the salad, like a spam salad. Earlier in the day, this girl that I didn't even know gave me a whole bag of kale. Nice. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm gonna make like the killeriest salad. Right. So I put kale, yeah, tomatoes, <laughs> cucumbers, uh, garbanzo beans, and and then I was like, there's something missing. And then I'm, I saw a can of spam <laughs> in my cabinet. So I'm like. I will pan fry this and throw nice. that in there. And then just to top it off, caramelized onions. Ooh. And so, you say you don't cook. I mean, I feel like there was not that much cooking involved. <laughs> it was a lot of chopping because everything was like chopped to small pieces. Oh, okay. And then, yeah, there was also avocado in it too. Damn. That sounds so, amazing. It was, it was a, a cornucopia of vegetables and spam right so i feel like we've definitely just switched bodies <laughs> last time i ate spam i think was just a few weeks ago and i just cut it up you just cut, I did cooked you cook it for it a minute or did you just oh for a minute okay this is the laziest way of eating spam that i've ever done but i was like i just want salt okay this the saddest way to eat spam would be to my, slice it up and then microwave it <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Which I have done before. Have you ever just opened the can and just munched on? Just dug in uh, with a spoon? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, not even with a spoon. It's like, uh, look, we'll just call it the calsut style. <laughs> you just <laughs> slowly dropping it to your mouth. What if we just had one large, long chain of spam? Well, if we will go through the history and it actually originates from something that big. Oh, all right. Teach me. Oh, this is a great transition. <laughs> <laughs> but ex uh, what exactly is luncheon meat? 
Luncheon meat is another name for cold cuts, lunch meat, cooked meats, deli meats, or sliced meats. They're pretty much just cooked or cured meats that are often served sliced and can usually be either eaten hot or cold. Hence why those names sound familiar and that's why they got their names too. Common forms of these kind of meats are salami, bologna, pastrami, and spam. <laughs> spam. <laughs> the odd one. It's the, it's the run. It's like you're, you're presenting your uh, option. Yeah. Bologna, salami, pastrami, and uh, spam. <laughs> and bologna. Yeah. The origins of the luncheon meats, though, date back as far as ancient Rome, where these meats were used by Romans to feed their army. Presumably because the curing preserves the meat, so it's allowed them to eat or keep the food for longer. In America, though, the emergence of luncheon meats came from the immigrants, like all the things good in America, and from the arrival of the Jews in America. The Jews essentially began to open shop in America when they immigrated and the deli came to be. The term deli comes from the word delikatzen which is German or French, that translates to delicious things to eat. Really? I never knew really? what, what it stood for. Yeah. I thought you were being sarcastic. I learned something new. No, I didn't know. Yeah. I just thought it was a fancy word for places that sell meat and sandwiches. Yeah. No, the deli comes from delicats. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, the invention of meat and bread slicers, though, in the 40s, is what led to the emergence and popularity of these luncheon meats. Because when you can cut meat that quickly and cut bread that quickly, what dish do you think becomes the easiest thing to make now? Spam sandwiches. Yeah, exactly. Spam burrito. Spam burrito. Yeah, sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sandwiches became easy to make, right? Um, stores were able to prepare meat and bread so much more faster, making them cheaper and more convenient for everyone. Sandwiches became almost like a lunch sandwiches. staple. Hence the name. Spamages. Hence the name's lunch meat and spamages. Wow, spamage. Which I think is why lunch meat is called luncheon meat as well, because luncheon is also lunch. Yes. Yeah. So many shortcuts. Hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's the kind of the setting. Other convenience. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, all of that was what set up the world before the arrival of spam. <laughs> But the hist- we were priming the world for spam, essentially. For the graceful yeah. invention of the best meat that's ever invented. Exactly. <laughs> uh, the history of spam itself starts in 1929 from a little company on in Austin, Minnesota called the Hormel Foods Corporation. Now, the company itself was started by George Hormel back in the 18 late 1800s when George <laughs> Hormel. <laughs> Passed the keys to his son to run the company, um, Jay Harmel. This eager son wanted to create something new and specialized, I guess, to grow the company and focused eventually on deli stores where they sold six pound canned meats. But they were, six pounds? Yeah. Wow. That's, okay. that's the origins there. Where stores then would slice and sell to customers. So they would it would arrive in these big metal cans. Oh my god, I'm just imagining the exact same spam cans, but bigger. Yeah, but six pounds. <laughs> oh. um, when he saw that this was what was happening with these meats, he wanted to find a way to actually make a smaller version for customers to buy as well. So instead of having deli stores have to cut up the meat and then sell that to the customers, they essentially wanted to cut the middle person out. And he also wanted to use a less popular cut of pork, which is the pork shoulder, possibly save money and find a use for this cut. So, Cause I'm sure they had other pork products and they had an excess of pork shoulders anyway. To solve this, eight years later, in 1937, Spam was born. <laughs> now, the Hormel company, when it comes to the name, they claim that it came up, that they came up with the name collectively, but allegedly the story goes that a guy named Ken Dagenau, Dagenau, who is the brother of a vice president in Hormel, actually came up with a name during a naming contest in a New Year's party. What an employee's party. Yeah. It's like, hey, gather around. 
Yeah. We're gonna name some meat. <laughs> <laughs> like for this for our social event in our work party, we're gonna do work. <laughs> we're gonna name meat. <laughs> Uh, am I getting paid for this party? Shut up, Dan. You asked the weirdest up. questions. <laughs> You're also paying for that drink. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he won a hundred dollars for his efforts. Oh, nice. Hey, a hundred bucks back then. Yeah. That's probably like hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah. Now. That's like at least a hundred cans of spam. Yeah. Very many. Yeah. Uh, the word spam itself. And its meaning seemed to be also contentious, like every history origin we've had. Of course. Um, Hormel claims that it's because it's a mix of spice and ham, but there isn't really any spice or ham in spam. It might be. Well, it's pink and it's meat, so that's like yeah, ham esque. Yeah. And then for some people. Salt is a spice. Yeah. <laughs> yep, there you go. So, right, but checks out. <laughs> checks out. <laughs> um, but other people say that it might also just be an acronym for shoulder of pork and ham, or sp- that doesn't make sense because they use the pork shoulder, but ham is no, pork. and ham ham starts with an H. Yeah. Oh. Shoulder well, there's am pork, Cause, and I thought the a was for and. I don't know. Maybe the ending is m, <laughs> uh, or the other. Well, spo- <laughs> it's it's sp- it doesn't, have, <laughs> it doesn't have the same effect. Yeah, maybe that's why they're like, hmm, maybe not spa. <laughs> How about spam? Because it has spam. spam. Others. Oh, also claim that it's an acronym for specially processed assorted meat, which does spell out spam this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You can have that one. But my other people, which is what my guess would be, is it could just be a random thing that can just popped up. I mean, it's a New Year's party. People say weird shit when they're drunk. Yeah, true. It's probably just trying to get beer, but just flubber elbows and goes spam. <laughs> <laughs> what I won? I'm hundred dollars. <laughs> Again, stop getting drunk. You sound like a Don't baby. <laughs> Booby, but here's a hundred dollars for you to shut up. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> oh, I hope he's not still alive and listening to this. <laughs> I'm sure he is. Oh, okay. He, he he put on he put on his hundred dollars into good investments this time. <laughs> good enough to retire yeah. on. He enjoyed uh mixing his spam with apples and invested in it. Spam apples. Ooh. And he invested. I wouldn't invested be in opposed apple. to that. Oh oh, <laughs> like not an actual apple. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my jokes are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's laughing. It's me. (laughs) One. And maybe one of our three listeners. Thanks, listeners. Yeah. (laughs) Another breakthrough when the creation of spam came with the creation of the can. The spam can. The spam can. um, Where they found a way to turn that six pound can into something smaller. Julius. Way smaller. Yeah. Julius Zilgit is credited for creating the can. Good for you, Julius. But he did not get a hundred dollars because he was already an employee. <laughs> Might have gotten a raise. Who knows? You got it. Yeah. And the big discovery from it is that they realized that putting the pork in the can creates a vacuum effect. I wrote vaccine, but I'm, it's vacuum effect. <laughs> um, it creates a vacuum. Don't forget effect. to vaccinate your spam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, there is that too. Um, but the vacuum effect is the one that creates a way to preserve the meat much longer. So they both found a way to make it smaller and found a way to actually preserve the meat, which is a great yeah. discovery. Before we go about into how spam is made, I figured we'd throw in a few spam facts. Yay, spam facts. <laughs> Today, Austin is essentially spam town. They have a street named Spam Boulevard, a restaurant that ha- that's called John Spam- Spamarama. <laughs> Johnny Spamarami. <laughs> Spamarama. <laughs> Uh, they have dishes like spam de milk, which is spam and cheese. The grilled cheese with spam. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, they have a spam museum and they even have a spam recipe competition. Oh man, I would love to go to this attraction. Yep. Austin, Minnesota, <laughs> take us. Oh, Minnesota, yeah. not Texas. Nope. Surprisingly <laughs> not. Yeah. Oh, here's a fun one. Here's another spam fact. How long did it take? How long, how many years do you think it took them to sell their billionth can? Two. <laughs> I'll give you two more guesses. Well, nope. 20? Yeah. Over uh, oh, just a little okay. over 20 years to sell their billionth can. 1959 was where they sold their first billionth can. Uh from my estimates from what I've seen is they probably have passed way past the 20th billion can by now. Yeah, and like a, a, yeah. a good 150 of those were from me. Yeah. Cuz it took them I think like 15 <laughs> after that and then 4 years after that. To grow another oh, billion. So there's got, a spam blow explosion. Spam explosion yeah. <laughs> um, according to the Hormel Foods Corporation, an average of 13 cans of spam are consumed every second. Oh, wow, that's quite a bit. Yeah, which is yeah a lot. The estimated shelf life of spam is three to five years. There's also seems to be over 20 varieties of spam in the world. Oh, I've tried some of the yeah. fancy ones. We're, we're, I love them. You gotta try all of these. So there's a spam classic. There's spam hot and spicy, which is with Tabasco. There's jalapeno spam. There's spam with black pepper. There's spam low sodium and then spam light. Where spam I've low sodium spam is still spam, while spam light is made with also lower s- fat. Lower fat, lower sodium, lower calories, and also made with chicken. That sounds like not fun at all. According to their website, it says mechanically separated chicken, which is sounds very disturbing. (laughs) Um, There's also spam oven roasted, spam hickory smoked, spam bacon, spam cheese, spam garlic, spam teriyaki. I had the, I had a weird spicy one. Ooh, it might be like it's called mala. Yes, mala. Yeah, mala. Yeah. Is it like mes- there's one that's spam mezclita, which is Puerto Rican cheese though. Oh no, I, I haven't that's spicy. that one. Yeah. You know, now I'm gonna go on eBay and start buying like <laughs> random spam. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they'll make it across the border, but Who we're knows? sure gonna try. There's also spam chorizo, spam macadamia nuts, spam turkey, what? spam tocino, spam Portuguese sausage. There's the spam mezclita, which is again we mentioned is the one with cheese. And believe it or not, there is a spam limited edition that was released late in September 19, 2019. This is to cater to people in fall. What do you think this flavor is? Pumpkin spice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that so there was awful. a very limited edition release of spam pumpkin spice, apparently, that exists. <laughs> I don't know if this is true um, or not. Uh, I want to find it. Oh, uh, we Yeah, we need that yeah. for science. And then there's also weird ones like Spam Spread, which is a spreadable version of Spam. Oh. Actually, I'm pretty sure the Spam Esclita was also similar, but that one was with cheese as well. Cheese with Spam. Yeah. There's also Spam Fries, uh, Spam Patties. and I love Spam Fries. Oh, yeah, I've They're never so tried them. There's Spam Patties too, which are like hamburger bun patties. I mean, you could just cut them yourself. Maybe this one's like perfectly <laughs> shaped for... You just get a cookie cutter and just like <laughs> make it circular. <laughs> yeah, no, true. Um, there's also small cans of spam and spam singles. How cute! Yeah, they're like in little oh, plastic spam. coverings instead of How metal. How cute! Would you want to guess which American state has the highest per capita consumption? Texas. <laughs> Hawaii. Oh, duh! Yeah. Uh, oh wow! This one's fun too. Aside from America, who is gets the international crown? For most per capita consumption. It's definitely an Asian country. Yep. I don't know which one though. Korea. Yeah. South Korea. Oh, yeah. (laughs) In Hawaii as well, you also get special flavors of Spam, such as honey Spam, Spam with bacon, and hot and spicy Spam. That sounds so good. What's fun about Hawaii is they also have Spam dishes in Burger King and McDonald's. Ooh. Um, They also have an annual event called the Spam Jam, which I think... We probably might cover one day. I want to go. Yeah. It's a spam day. In Asia, spam is so popular in countries like South Korea or the Philippines, where they're almost used as gifts even. Actually, no, they're not almost. They are used as gifts. 
I'd be so happy yeah. if somebody just gave me right? like, a stack of spam. Yeah. I'd be like, I'll use it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a that's it. a useful gift. Yes. Tamara. Practical. Yeah. <laughs> um, in South Korea, it's packed usually in gift boxes during, which were given out as gifts for the Lunar New Year. Ooh. It should also include things like cooking oil, seasoning, wine, and other premium meats. So I guess spam is fancy in Korea. Spam is fancy. Um, in the Philippines, they are often given as balikbayan gifts or homecoming gifts. So people coming from the States or whatever would usually bring some spam home for their family. Oh, nice. Uh, in China, spam is positioned as a prom- as a premier food product and is actually called luncheon meat rather than spam. Oh, because so fancy. Yeah, it's apparently a little meatier as well. I don't know what that means and I'm a little disturbed. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of like how meaty. I mean, it's, yeah. the whole thing is meat. Yeah. <laughs> like, how, like how, much more... how much meatier can you get? Yeah, exactly. In the UK, spam has a negative or cheap perception to the point that they actually have a term called spam valley. Which refers to residential oh, areas okay. where people it's may like a trailer seem rich, park. but are actually poor. <laughs> all right, the I, Broad okay. Bay area of Vancouver, I guess, where people look like they live posh, but they're probably all broke actors. <laughs> you mean all of LA? Yeah, there you okay. go. So those are probably <laughs> spam valleys. Yeah. The negative right. perception of spam has also led to the creation of the term spam mail, uh, which is a term yeah, we use for unsolicited that... emails. Yeah, it actually came from the this spam. <laughs> this spam. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I was just doing some some googling. <laughs> oh, you have all the I photos. Can, I can buy this on Amazon. This sampler pack. Nice. Do it. If I order it right now, can you send will it me be one here too? By the time I get back, currently unavailable. Oh, Ooh. that's not good. What's when people ask the what's in spam? This is a pretty contentious topic in the press there's a lot of negative information or negative press about spam containing questionable ingredients like there's this perception i think with some people that people think that spam has weird shit in it yeah i've heard yeah i've heard that but hornell foods stick to claim that original spam only contains six ingredients salt yes uh I want to say ham, but it's not ham. It's just meat. <laughs> it's pork shoulder. Sometimes pork with ham shoulder. Meat, yeah. And the other four are water, sugar, sodium nitrate, and potato starch. Uh, of course, the oh. varieties have their other ingredients too, but this is for the classic spam at least. Mm-hmm. Why, if we want to find out why these ingredients exist in spam, well, pork is there for, um, well, Obvious reasons, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. The water, salt, and sugar are there for the cooking and the flavoring process. Uh, sodium nitrate is used as a preservative. And also from the reaction of the nitrates with protein in the spam, it actually gives the meat the distinctive pink color we see. Oh, nice. And the sixth ingredient, potato starch, was added only in 2009. And the reason they added it is to remove that gelatin layer that used to form inside the can you remember that back in the day like when you open spam they had like like a jelly yeah i feel like there's still the the most recent can that oh no i guess it wasn't if you think about it it's been it was like a a, yeah okay okay the reason for that is because in 2009 which is pretty much when we were in our teens or 20s it changed and all of a sudden the gelatin layer was gone so the potato starch itself was added Pretty much for aesthetic reasons, because the gelatin layer is kind of gross. They creep to people out. Yeah. You know what? They're weak. Yeah. Like if you find them. <laughs> They're weak. <laughs> that was that was Angel Soup stock. <laughs> <laughs> you need yeah. the jelly. Yep. But the, the jelly. potato starch though also helps with retaining the moisture for the spam. So it does help a little. I wonder if the taste changed that much. Uh, it seems like not like, really. I don't remember. Yeah, probably not. I don't think it really affects the taste too much. I, it looks like it just affects the preservation. Okay. Yeah. When it comes to how spam is made, it used to be made in two facilities in Fremont, Nebraska, and Austin, Minnesota. But now it's just made in Austin. I think the other plant just closed down. But <gasps> I would assume that there are other plants internationally as well. Like, I hope so. How can they keep up with the demands of spam? Yeah. Right. 
<gasps> when I'm hungry. <laughs> What makes me think, actually, yeah, what makes me think it actually might be produced only in Austin, Minnesota, is the way the spam is made. So, of course, first you grind the pork, and then the pork is mixed with water, salt, and sugar, where it's kind of cooked, I guess, or heated a little bit, like, essentially finding the right temperature. And after that, it's portioned and vacuum sealed into the cans, and then the cans are then cooked. Um, in a really cool heating process, um, cooled and labeled. This cooking process actually is pretty cool. The machine they use to cook this cans of spam is apparently six stories high. Holy crap! And can produce That's a about lot. I think thirty three thousand cans an hour. I think is what I saw. Wow. So, yeah. We go on a factory tour. Oh yeah, sure. This, this is something fun. that I would love to see. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I think that make. How many seconds are there in an hour? I think it's less than that. So that's uh, that's asking me to math. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, 60 times 60 times 60. Uh, pass. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> but yeah, that's the reason why they have to produce 33,000 cans per hour because they think that about 13 cans per second like get sold me. or consumed. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The popularity of Spam actually came about thanks to World War II because its packaging and longevity allowed it to be a useful meal to carry around during war. You have a metal can that doesn't that can survive. So yeah, it's both dirt proof and maybe bulletproof. You can hurl it at somebody's head and a weapon. Really hurt them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, during World War II, it was apparently given different nicknames like the ham that didn't pass physical. The meatloaf without basic training or just special <laughs> army meat. Wow, they're so mean yeah. to spam. Right. How about the the meat package that's gonna save your life? Yeah, exactly. Huh? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> about fifty a hundred and fifty million pounds were bought by the military to feed the army during the war. Mm -hmm. This also apparently is the reason why it rose that spam rose to popularity globally. In America, though, spam gained a negative perception after the war because soldiers just didn't want to see spam ever again. <laughs> it was so bad oh, that uh, J. Harmel said that he had so much hate mail that he kept in a file. So I guess he had his own version of spam mail. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he ever takes it out, just like cries a single tear? <laughs> I don't know. I think he sounded like you should be grateful we were able to feed you. Yeah, I would be grateful. Yeah. But I could imagine just for how many how many years was war? So you were like just eating spam every day spam. for three years. I bet they ate other things than spam. Yeah. Mud. Although spam might be a large part of the diet. Yeah, for sure. It's probably not the only part. I hope so. I don't know. If any, if any <laughs> World War II American survivors... Tell us about your Listen traumatic in. spam story. Yeah. And if you ever personally wrote a letter <laughs> about to Hormel, yeah. we want to know. But yeah, because of all of this uh, spam that was being used by American soldiers, places like Guam, Hawaii, Japan, South Korea, the Philippines, the Soviet Union, and the UK eventually took on spam to their cuisines in different ways. For the places like the UK and the Soviet Union, they got spam because America sent rations essentially to help them as they recovered. They're like, please take these. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to ever see them again. Yeah, exactly. But more often than not, these countries took on spam after the war as they were discarded by American soldiers and the local people took them on after the war because these places were mostly ravaged anyway. And these were sources of food. And they were delicious. And they preserved well in okay. tropical heat. So it worked out. Magical. Exactly. In Hawaii, though, the ban on fishing is what made um, spam popular there. That's because apparently after the war, most fishermen were Japanese. So the United States made a ban on fishing to probably screw them over. Yeah, um, sounds about right. Yeah. And because of that, then spam became an option because there was a bunch of spam out there too. So it became the protein substitute. In Guam, spam is associated with the end of the Japanese invasion and I guess the beginning of the American one. But the, I think the article I was reading was an American one, so it said the liberation. Um, anyway, 
Uh, spam is so heavily tied to the end of the Japanese invasion and the American arrival of the American troops that became kind of associated to something as a symbol of liberty. Ooh. Allegedly. The meat of liberty. <laughs> the meat of liberty. <laughs> In Japan, spam rose in popularity because, similar to the Soviet in the UK, it was sent over as rations by Americans. And people there were to the point of really dying of starvation. So the arrival of spam helped kind of feed the population there. It's a similar story for Korea, but it was after the Korean War instead of World War II. Ah, yeah. In the Philippines, spam rose to popularity because apparently American soldiers used it as a form of reward to Filipinos. (laughs) Good job. Take the meat I don't like. <laughs> but oh, without that yeah. super kind and sincere gesture, no, there's... Filipinos would never have loved spam. So thank you for being yeah, assholes. Thank you. <laughs> Spread the love. Thank you Spread for colonizing love. us. <laughs> uh, today, though, spam seems to be going through a resurgence in both, probably because of the recession, cheap meats. Usually good during low times. That's what I'm all about. Um, But also apparently high-end chefs are starting to use it in their restaurants. Oh. Spam's good. So why not charge $80 for it? I could just go home and microwave my own spam. Monster. (laughs) Um, It's now globally sold in over 41 countries, but trademarked in over 100 Interestingly, the countries they're not trademarked in are pretty much just countries that practice kosher or halal practices. It's just non-kosher or it's not halal at all. (laughs) Um, As we are a food podcast, the best thing we'd like to talk about is how you could actually eat spam. What's your favorite um, spam? I like, uh, I really like um, the Hawaiian grill restaurants that they don't have here. But they usually, they would have spam with like, Either a fried egg yep. or sometimes even pineapple. Yeah. Local <laughs> mocos. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Those are amazing. Love it. Uh, I'm gonna, oh, fuck, I'm going to cook spam now. <laughs> In Hawaii, like we said, one popular, other popular dish would be spam musubi, which they call yes. also, as, or is also known as poor man sushi. Oh, it's so good. It's the best sushi. <laughs> and obviously this uh, is very influenced by the prevalence of Japanese immigrants in Hawaii. Uh, similar to the Japanese onigiri, which is rice and meat of sorts or vegetables wrapped in the seaweed. Spam musubi. You have a little sp- little slice of spam. Yeah, essentially he has a little slice of spam with rice and seaweed. Like we were just talking about, there's also the loco moco, which is the spam with, or it's rice with a burger patty, fried egg, and gravy, but you could also have it with spam. Yeah. Spam loco mocos are delicious. I'm sure you'd eat rice if it was all mixed in. I have before. Yeah. I have been known to things change a little when I go to Hawaiian yeah. grills. Yeah. So. Oh, for sure. I'm kind of happy they don't have them here. <laughs> Why? There oh, is I one. Miss them. Because then I would just be eating spam all the time. <laughs> that sounds like a good thing. There is a lot of salt. Yeah, for sure. Like a lot. <laughs> There's also salmon, which apparently is a soup dish. Soup dish. It looks like ramen, but it's with spam. That's like what you made. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Um, In Puerto Rico, there's a sandwich called uh, Sandwich de Mezcla, Sandwich de Mezcla, which is spam with Velveeta, which is their processed cheese bread brand, and pimentos mixed up into a spread. Sounds Mm. delicious. That sounds great. In the Philippines, spam is an option to add to your breakfast silog. Um, Silogs are, I guess, like when you have meat with garlic fried rice and fried egg great way to start your morning mm. love it with banana ketchup banana ketchup i love yeah. that stuff in japan in okinawa a common dish would be chanpu which is similar to the spam musubi but it will also have egg in it yeah spam and eggs yeah so spam and egg it's a spam and egg onigiri essentially um, they also have spam burgers that they sell in a local restaurant there called Jeff, J E F. Jeff. Yeah. Oh, I'm like Jeff. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a local fast food chain or something. Mm, okay. Um, in Korea, there are a number of different dishes when it comes to spam. They are the international crown winners for spam eating. Anyway, there's the spam kimbap, 
which is spam with rice and vegetables Ooh. rolled in a seaweed. So kind good. of like a maki roll with spice, with spam and vegetables. You also have the budajige, which is the one we tried in the spam episode, which is a, also translated. Budajige is Korean, translates in English as army base stew. Army soup, army stew. Yeah. So that's pretty much a spicy hot pot stew. So you have something mm. spicy with a little bit of cheese and then um, spam in it too. Yum, yum, so yum. So good. So that's the spam episode, as we do in every episode. Is it healthy or is it good? If it's healthy, the short and long answer is uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But I would say not as unhealthy as you might think, maybe. I think it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lunch and meat not even gonna lie yeah. everything i love is bad for Pretty me much. good for your mind and in smorgasbord <laughs> is, we're is all about the, the mind and palace the mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no it's pretty bad uh, lunch and meats as a whole in general anyway are typically high in fat nitrates and sodium and not to mention the use of preservatives as well yep um, sodium nitrate <laughs> is known bad. to be a potential cause of cancer when it interacts with certain amino acids. So if your body has those amino acids, it might that with the nitrate might turn to something that would is known to potentially cause cancer. I don't know. We're not doctors. We're not doctors. We just know that it's not great. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also all the fat in it that you could eat. Um, that can lead also to heart disease, diabetes. There's also high cholesterol. Let's not talk about that potato starch instead of the delicious healthy gel yeah angel <laughs> soup base uh, and yeah and all the processing and preservatives at the end of the day the meat you get has no yeah how much percentage of meat is minerals. actually in there it's all meat it's all meat. water sugar and it salt. just doesn't feel like it's all meat it's it's like meat congealed with happiness because well, yeah because the way they cook it is it's like Combined with all the water. So like when you ground up, it's like, imagine if you ground up pork and squished them all together and then put it in water. Yeah, re compounded meat. Yeah. <laughs> and by that, you have no vitamins or minerals left. At all, ever, whatsoever. But is it good? <laughs> it's <yeah>. worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth all the things that we just said. It's worth dying for. In fact, I'm probably going to go make myself some spam. You have some spam. Uh, on I hand. think I have the Korean one. So okay. spam is trademarked have... all around, but for some reason there's a brand, a Korean brand that has one. It's luncheon meat. Maybe. It's not spam. Yeah. I do have some spam spam. Spam spam. Um, I have spam spam. All right. Uh, just so you know, if you go to Costco, you can get like a three, three or a four pack. I don't remember. Ooh, flavored? But worth it. No, unfortunately, just, just OG. Um, I don't think they have the fun flavors in Canada. It doesn't seem like it. So, oh, I think price. So, oh no, the the grocery store by my house, I think has the other flavors. Do they? Yeah. Okay, go and take a picture, and then I'll I'll try any of them except for the lower sodium one. <laughs> yeah. Like I want full bad yeah, and full sure. bad with fun. Full bad with fun. <laughs> There you go. That's yeah. our episode on spam. The full bag of fun. With fun. Full bad with fun. Full bad a full bad with fun. Why did I say bag? I don't know. You said bag. Full bad with fun. Fun. There you go. Bye-bye. Meat. Meat. This, this is Morgan's board. board. This show was created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Edited by Mick Narciso and Bianca Goico. Logo and graphics by Angel Lynn. Music by Mick Narciso. And videography by Bianca Goico. The show is produced by Geek Happy Network. Constantly curious about the things we love. If you enjoyed listening to Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify, YouTube, or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We would love to hear your thoughts.